Wished, and welcome back, my fellow language teachers, to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Emily. In this video, we're talking about one great evidence-based way to build your students' motivation and confidence in the target language. Growth mindset. What are growth mindsets? Why do they matter? And how can you encourage them in your language learners? For those of you who might not know me yet, I'm Emily. I'm a linguist at Mango. I have my PhD in linguistics and a true passion for language teaching. Well, bandwali chanche, let's get to it. Okay, first, what is a language mindset? It's one's beliefs about their ability to learn languages. There are two main kinds of mindsets that you need to know about. Fixed mindsets and growth mindsets. Here's how they differ. Language learners with a fixed mindset believe that language learning is a kind of thing that you're either good at or you aren't, and there's not much you can do about it. Language learners with a growth mindset, on the other hand, believe they can learn any language with the right amount of effort and practice. Now, if you remember nothing else from this video, remember this. Learners with a growth mindset are gonna beat out learners with a fixed mindset every time. Why? When it comes to language learning, challenge is inevitable. So persistence is necessary. A learner's mindset influences their emotional responses and behavioral actions towards facing languages in the target language. So here's what you need to know about mindsets in second language acquisition. First, most students lie somewhere in between a true fixed and a true growth mindset, and their language mindsets can fluctuate day by day. For instance, a student might lean towards, say, a growth mindset, but they just failed a chemistry test, and now they're feeling less confident about their intellectual capabilities. Their mindset could also depend on the input they've received from their community as it relates to language. For example, students raised in a diglossic or bilingual community are more likely to believe that people can learn additional languages because they have ample real-life evidence from people all around them who do it every day. However, students raised in a monolingual community are more likely to believe that the ability to learn languages is a special or rare skill that a lot of people just don't have. Now, the second thing you need to know about mindsets as it relates to language learning is that students' mindsets may differ based on the performance task in the language. It's not uncommon for students to believe they're capable of mastering grammar, but not capable of mastering pronunciation. In which case, we'd say that they have a growth mindset towards grammar, but a fixed mindset towards pronunciation. Okay, and the third thing that you need to know about growth mindsets is that there are three main underlying beliefs that influence a student towards a fixed language mindset. And here's what they are. Native language aptitude beliefs, second language aptitude beliefs, and age sensitivity beliefs. As it relates to native language aptitude beliefs, a student might say something like, I'm not even good with words in my native language. So why would I expect I could learn a foreign language well? As it relates to second language aptitude beliefs, a learner with a fixed mindset might say, I just don't have the knack for learning foreign languages, so there's really no sense in trying. And as it relates to age sensitivity beliefs, a fixed mindset learner would say something like, after a certain age, I don't think you can really learn additional languages well. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the research that's been done into these three main underlying beliefs, then check out the suggested readings linked in the description down below. For now, it's time to get into some evidence-based tips and tricks that you can use in your classroom. So here are four tips for fostering growth mindset in your students. Tip number one, use freeform conversation activities in class. This all comes down to making sure there's a balance between performance-based activities and mastery-based activities. Performance-based activities like exams or oral presentations are necessary and important, but if there are too many performance-based tasks in class, students will be incentivized to overvalue things like external validation and performance metrics and undervalue the actual learning and growing process. The best way to balance performance-based activities is with mastery-based activities. One of my personal favorite mastery-based activities are free-form conversations. Here's how they work. You tell your students to take a step back from all of the technical language stuff that they've been studying and just focus on using the language to communicate with each other. It's that simple. Why does this work? Open-ended activities like these resemble real life interactions and reinforce the value of communicative competence, all in a low stakes, ungraded way. Talkative classes may not need much structure for these chatting sessions. Others, on the other hand, may benefit from the structured context of a collaborative task like a board game. Pro tip, during these activities, remind your students that error making is 100% encouraged. Doing so will help them adopt a growth mindset. Tip number two, 
Tell your students directly about the importance of a growth mindset. A 2016 study by Yedick and colleagues found that most teachers in the U.S. say they believe in the importance of growth mindset, but only 20% believe they can actually foster a growth mindset in their students. Indeed, the research to date has yielded some mixed results, but in one study of 12,000 students, a 50-minute lecture about growth mindset yielded on average a 3% increase in students' final grades. Now, there are a lot of ways behind the scenes that you can bake growth mindset into the structure of your classes. The freeform conversations activity is one of them, but there's a lot of potential impact to be had from sharing the information about the importance of growth mindset with your students directly. In doing so, you'd be helping them form a more productive and resilient approach to learning in your language class and beyond. And one really great way to get students talking about their mindsets is to start by reflecting on their learning goals. And if you'd like a helpful worksheet to use with your students to check in with their language learning goals, then check out the one we've linked for you in the description. Tip number three, give your students positive but honest feedback. Whatever you do, don't misinterpret the research on growth mindset to suggest that your main goal as a teacher should be to tell your students you're doing great no matter what. On the contrary, telling students they're doing great when they're not isn't productive and it can negatively affect their learning outcomes. Within the growth mindset framework, teachers don't give students a false sense of confidence in their current abilities. Rather, teachers give students a realistic sense of confidence that they can improve upon their current abilities in the language with the right effort and practice. And our last tip can help with that directly by giving your students a way to actively develop their growth mindset with one very easy to use resource. Which brings us to tip number four, have your students use the Mango Languages app. The Mango app was built with growth mindset in mind, pun intended. This is evident in how language challenges are approached within the app. For example, when a learner makes a common mistake on a notoriously tough grammar point, the app follows up with a reassuring note to explain the grammar point and provide the learner with helpful guidance on how to address it next time. Well, there you have it. Four tips for fostering growth mindset in your language learners. Oh, and last thing. Growth mindset helps students think about and approach their learning in a more positive and resilient way. It doesn't, however, change their immediate life or immediate learning circumstances. So growth mindset, while it's awesome, is not a perfect or singular solution to overcome every learning challenge, but it is an important part of the puzzle, especially for students who are particularly struggling. Well, my fellow language teachers, that's all for this time on Adventures in Language. If you're new here and you'd like to make sure that you are up to date on all of our awesome language teacher content, then come join the Mango fam by subscribing to the channel. And as always, if you have a question or an idea for a video that you'd like to see from us, let us know in the comments. We're always listening. Want to know what languages were used in today's video? Then make sure you check out the show notes in the description. See you next time on Adventures in Language. Bye! back and I'm here to remind you don't forget to get your free language teacher goodies which you can access through the link in the description. In next week's video we're diving into spaced repetition. What is it and why should language teachers be using it? If you want to be the first to know when that video goes live then ring that notification bell. In the meantime you can catch up on our existing videos which you can access through the links here on the screen. And I look forward to hanging out with you here next time. Bye!